lesson 18 of guided reading. Now, if you remember, the last time we read Cole's Kingdom, um, Yogna, who is the mum of the twins that kidnapped Cole, is having a chat. So Yogna led Cole into the fire and sat him on a colourful rug of orange and pink triangles. All around the small cottage were blankets, needlework pictures and detailed tapestries showing images of great battles. In fact, they were identical, they were identical to the style Cole had seen in King Enk's palace. Each picture had the strange look of being three-dimensional, as though it would have to be it would be easy to step through into the fabric of the world beyond. Yogna caught him looking. So this is where we're up to. I made them for the king. I made them for the people in the capital. My mother taught me how, as did her mother before her. So she's talking about the tapestries, the wall art that are magical. They're wonderful, Cole said truthfully. They're the only reason we eat, she replied, and Cole knew that the conversation was over. Piog knelt by the fire to pour grains and water into a great iron pot like a cauldron. So a cauldron, there may be a picture on here, you can see there in the fireplace, you can see the cauldron. It's like what a witch cooks her brew in. Um, into a great iron pot like a cauldron. He reached up to grab leaves and garlic cloves from the beams and tossed them in. Soon, a rich, savoury smell filled the smoky air in the cottage. Savoury. Savoury is the opposite of sweet. There now, we'll soon get you fed and back to your own world, said Yognar. You'll really take me home, asked Cole. You don't belong here. What the twins were thinking, I don't know. It was Mika's idea, Mum, Piog protested, stirring the cauldron of beige soup with an enormous ladle. Beige is a very light brown. But you went along with it, Piog. You could have said no, said Yagna reprovingly. Reprovingly is when you're telling somebody off. Now fetching bowls carved from golden wood, she handed Cole a bowl filled with steaming greens and a chunk of bread. It might have been like, like lumpy porridge or perhaps sticky rice, except that it tasted very little except for garlic and the bread was solid and black. Cole hadn't realised how hungry he was. He had eaten plenty of magical cakes and treats at the king's palace and ought to be full to bursting. Yet he felt empty and hollow inside. Hollow is when you there's nothing inside something. Now, however, the more he ate, the more he felt like his old self. He didn't know why, but Cole liked this place and he trusted Yognar. She was brisk and cross but seemed to genuinely care. The food was chewy and stale. Stales when think food is a bit old and as far away from the king's sugary feast as possible, but at least it was real. There, said Yognar, what better way to make friends than over a meal? Piog and Mika joined Cole and Yognar beside the fire and began to eat greedily. Chatting between mouthfuls, Mika looked at Cole with a furrowed brow. All right, look at this, a furrowed brow. So your brow is your head your forehead, above your eyes and your eyebrows. And if it's furrowed, it means you're thinking because it's creased. So it shows that she is thinking. You like it? Delicious, Cole said. It was almost true, especially if he compared the mushy grains to feeling the feeling of an empty stomach. Piog raised an eyebrow. If you think this is delicious, food must be disgusting in your world. So there we are. This is all about getting to know Cole getting to know the twins and their mother. We've got three questions now. Cole hadn't realised how hungry he was. How hungry he was. He had eaten plenty of magical cakes and treats at the king's palace and ought to be full to bursting. Yet he felt empty and hollow inside. Now, however, the more he ate, the more he felt like his old self. He didn't know why, but Cole liked this place and he trusted Yognar. She was brisk. When you're brisk, it means... You're very busy and you don't speak to people for a long time. Um, and cross, but seemed to genuinely care. The food was chewy and stale and as far away from the king's sugary feast as possible. So, you are going to look at this extract and find and copy the word which is closest in meaning to should. So, press pause whilst you do that. And then unpause and we'll find the word that means should. 
Okay, the word is ought. If you ought to do something, you should. Ought and should are modal verbs. They mean the same thing. Cole hadn't realised how hungry he was. So this is the same extract. What effect is eating having on Cole? So what's it doing to him? How's it making him feel? Press pause, press pause and then we'll do this together. Okay, the more he ate, the more he felt like his own self. So it's making, it's filling him up, it's stopping him from feeling hungry, but it's also making him feel good and more like his old self. It's making him feel better. And then again, the same extract. Why might Cole feel empty and hollow inside, even though he ate the king's food? So think about it. Press pause and then we'll do it together. So the king's food was magical. And in fact, it says, look, the food was chewy and stale as far away from the king's sugar feast as possible, but at least it was real. It seems like the king's food was not real. Yes, it had a taste, but it didn't fill coal up and it didn't nourish his body. So because, the answer would be, coal might feel empty and hollow inside because the king's food was not real. It was magical. That's the end of this guided reading lesson, and I'll see you back for lesson 19.